Well, before we start, um, this is what I feel we should do, okay? I'd like to say that a uh, uh, great thank you to the worship team, to the uh, broadcast team, the media team, even all the staff. It's because the church has this group of dedicated people who are working hard, and that's why we are able, the rest of us are able to be uh, receiving, attending service at home. Okay, so wherever you are, I think we should encourage them. I can't ask for you to clap and they can't hear it anyway, but this is what you will do. I will ask of you to take out your phone, all right? If you know anybody in the worship team, the sound team, the uh, church staff, whoever whom you think needs encouragement, who have been working hard weekly, right? Send them a text. Tell them that God loves them and tell them that you appreciate them, okay? So, first time ever during service, I ask you to take out your phone, send a text, encourage the, the, the laborers who are laboring in love for you and for God, okay? Can you do that? Right? Next thing that we will do, um, just now Pastor Zach talked about um, prayer, okay? And I would like to issue a call to prayer. And he said that we will pray throughout the uh, month of June. But I say that we should pray from beyond June into July, okay? All the way until National Day because it is time to do uh, the, the, our traditional 40 days of fasting and prayer. Love Singapore is calling uh, people, churches under Love Singapore, to pray and fast for the 40 days. And I think it is a meaningful thing. We are committed to this prayer initiative because it is, uh, if the church do not rise up to pray, then who else would? It's time to call out to God, to seek His face, to set aside time so that we can hear what He's saying to the churches in Singapore. Okay, it's time to stand in the gap, to stand in the gap for the land, to stand in the gap for our people, to stand between the living and the dead. Okay, so that will be from 1st of July all the way to uh, 9th of uh, August, National Day, that 40 days prayer and fasting. Church, it's time to pray and it's time to believe that as we pray, the Lord will intervene on our behalf. All right, so that's for the 40 days prayer and fasting. And uh, we will be giving you uh, some instructions later on uh, in the month, uh, how to get the materials online and how to pray together. We need to pray now more than ever. Okay, with that, let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are with us and that your eyes is watching over us individually and collectively as a church. We thank you that through Jesus, we can have access, oh God, to you, O oh God, and we can come boldly to you. And when we pray in Jesus' name, you say also in your words that you will hear us and you will answer our prayer. So in the next two months uh, coming on, as we commit ourselves to seek your face, we pray, oh God, that the church will have a new sensitivity to your Holy Spirit, that we will open up our ears and our eyes to hear what you have to say to us individually and as a church. And we, as we pray, oh Lord, may your blessing, oh God, come upon the church. For, oh God, we are reminded that we are called, oh Father, we are caught by you, O oh Father, and that you will bless us, O oh God, because you have called us to be a blessing to those who are around us and to the community. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Thank you for this opportunity to pray, O oh God. And for today, right now, oh God, we just pray that you will bless the preaching of your word. Prepare our hearts that our hearts may be good soil to receive the seed of your word and that, that, that seed and that word of God will, cause, uh, will germinate and will cause fruits to come, oh God. Fruits that are needed for this season. We pray all that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. A friend of mine, a good friend of mine in our church uh, said something like this that he prefers not to. Okay, you hear this? Huh? He prefers not to hear God so clearly sometimes. 
because it usually entails getting him into something that is uncomfortable. He doesn't like the, the feeling of uncertainty and he does not like the uh, act of walking into the unknown. So he joked. He joked about this and because he said that after hearing, uh, if he doesn't obey, he will feel gawe, uh, okay? He will feel uncomfortable, right? If he doesn't uh, obey, he feels awkward. But if he does obey, he knows from experience that, that it usually entails doing something that he doesn't really enjoy, at least for the short term. Well, he is not a young or immature Christian. He's a faithful man who loves God and uh, frankly has been a blessing to many people. Many people have been blessed by his ministry. He's just candidly sharing his fears. After following God for so many years, well, God usually comes true, okay? For him, God usually comes true in the end and the outcome of his obedience has always been positive. Not exactly like he would want it, but it has been positive and has been good, okay? But when I asked him, when I asked him if he's given a choice, whether he would obey and be able to walk on water regularly, he said he preferred not to. The uncertainty and the loss of control will be too much for him to handle. That's what he said. Is that the same for you? My friend has been following Jesus faithfully uh, for uh, many years. But given the choice, he would choose certainty over uncertainty. He would prefer to have a fuller understanding of his situations, his environment. He would want to know what God is doing, what God is doing next, what God is requiring of him next. He wants to understand the full situation before he decides to follow. But how many of you know that life is not like that? That the uh, luxury of having full understanding before you make any decisions, that is one luxury that none of us have. So for today, I'm going to use this story of the feeding of the 5,000 to share three simple truths, three simple principles to help us follow Jesus even though we do not understand fully. That is first part, first half of the sermon. And then for the second half, I'll be uh, sharing the uh, lives and example as people put all this principle into practice, okay, the testimonies that they have. That will be the second part. So the first part will be relatively short and the second part, uh, got, that there's time for me to tell some stories. Let us read John 6, 5 to 13. When Jesus looked up, he saw a great crowd coming towards him. He said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for uh, these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here's a, brother, here's a boy with five barley loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in the place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there, plus women and children. Some said it was about 15,000. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same for the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Go, gather the pieces that, uh, that are left over. Nothing to be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. The first point thinking rationally and doing your sums. When we talk about following Jesus, we often think about the sensational. When we read the Bible, these things jumps up at us, the sensational, like Peter walking on water. But then, 
uh, we often use people like Philip to illustrate the lack of faith. Well, for today, for the first point, I am going to be fair to Philip. Why? Because what he said was the most reasonable answer. Right? What Philip said was the most reasonable answer. Would you not agree? If Jesus were to ask you the same question, what would you have said? Philip gave the rational response. He did the Psalms and the Psalms did not add up. Actually, it was not only Philip. Okay? If you read the Gospel of Mark, you will know that all the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, they urged Jesus, send the crowd away. Let them go buy their food. Let them go buy their food. Send the crowd away. That was the reasonable thing to do. All right? And so I want to tell you that there is nothing wrong in thinking rationally and in doing our sums. As Christians, we are a Expected, We are expected to use our sound mind, the mind that God has given us. As we spoke about this last week, in fact, I felt that as Christians, we are expected to use our mind, uh, do the Psalms and plan even more than others because we are expected to be good stewards of our resources. We are expected to think and to count. Luke 14, 28 says this, that suppose one of you wants to build a tower, wouldn't you first sit down and estimate the cost? That's counting, right? Proverbs 14, 15 says, the simple believe every word, but the prudent consider well his steps. That's thinking, that's planning. And I want you to know that walking by faith is not ignoring the facts and the figures. Failure to see facts and figures many times, failure to do that is considered irresponsible. And in fact, failure to do that will lead to devastating consequences sometimes. In our daily walk with Jesus, we are to do our sums. We are to plan according to the principles laid up in the Bible. I say again that we are supposed to plan, we are supposed to do our sums to count, but as Christians, we are supposed to do it according to the principles laid up in the Bible. That is how we should live as Christians, as His followers. However, okay, I think you know that it will be coming down. However, following Jesus is not just about proper planning or just following the facts and the figures. As much as I want you to think rationally, I also do not want you to be completely bound by just the facts, the figures, and the current realities. If you do, then you will probably dismiss every thought, okay? Every thought that seems irrational, that doesn't make sense to your mind, without even considering if God or Jesus is asking you to do something, right? Is Jesus calling you, okay, beyond the rationality to do something? Following Jesus involves faith, and Hebrews 11 verse 1 says this, that faith is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. It means that sometimes, sometimes, even when we do not see it, to trust that Jesus is working. That even if the Psalms do not add up, that we can still have the confidence that Jesus wants us to follow. He is leading us. It means having to walk even though we notice a gap in our Psalms, our logic, or our planning. And that leads us to my second point, which is to see these gaps then as opportunities. Walking with Jesus can be nerve-wracking because on and off, on and off in our faith journey, He will direct us to a route, okay? A route that is beyond what we can plan and what we can imagine. As He calls us to take this route, that's when we will start feeling uncomfortable. Why? Because it does not fit into what we are thinking, what you are thinking. This is when the Psalms may not add up. There's a gap. When he calls, sometimes there is a gap, a gap between 
where you are, all right, between where you are versus what you sense He is leading you to be. And if it is resources, that's how we feel that there is a gap, okay? That if the gap is in the form of resources, then it can be what you think you have versus what you sense God wants you to give. And if you operate only using rational thinking, then you will be limited by the gap. You will be paralyzed by the gap because your eyes tell you that it is impossible. In that situation, even if the Lord convicts you regarding a certain matter, many a times your mind will shut down. The first thing you would say that it is impossible and you will likely dismiss it. The good news is, for us Christians, right, we do not need to live under the constraints of gaps and uncertainties. We must believe that when God calls, God will provide. And in such circumstances, gaps can become opportunities for Jesus to work on. And when Jesus does His work to address those gaps, these gaps can become opportunities and the outcome of it will be testimony for, testimonies for you to tell. We spoke about the, the psalms that does not add up. Well, when Jesus calls, he will change the equation to the psalms. That was what happened when uh, at the feeding of the 5,000, Philip and his disciples counted. They counted and they know that the gap, the assess that the gap was too great. Right? They counted and they assessed that the gap was too great and they were right. But I am glad they did not. They did not quarrel with Jesus when he asked to sit the people down in groups. We said huh, 5,000 all add together, about 15,000. But can you imagine the anxiousness of the disciples when he was, they were organizing the groups? Huh? 15,000 people divided into groups. How long do you think that would take? Right? The anxiousness that they have. Do you think at that point of time that in their mind they know that dinner was coming? Right? Do you think they could tell with conviction, now please sit down, dinners will be served in the next couple of minutes or so? Right? So there was anxiousness when they took time to organize the people. At that point, they did not understand the situation for, uh, fully but they cho choose to follow. And because they chose to follow, they were about to learn that when Jesus calls, gaps can become opportunities. John 6, 6 says this. It indicates that uh, Jesus asked Philip only to test him for oh, he already had in mind what he was going to do. Besides having compassion for the hungry people, I believe that Jesus wanted uh, his disciples, Philip and the rest of the disciples, to learn about faith, faith in him, faith in him, faith in him when you walk with him, that when you walk with Jesus, gaps can become opportunities as they follow him. And that is what I felt, church. That is what I felt that the Lord wants us to learn as well that gaps can be opportunities as we choose to follow Him. The final point of the sermon I want to talk to you about is the math that Jesus used, okay, as He multiplied the five loaves and the two fish. I believe that technically Jesus did not need the five loaves and the two fish given by the boy. He has given manna from heaven before. He has caused quail to fly in before. So he could do it again. God can do it again. So doesn't really need uh, those uh, resources given by the boy. However, the Bible is filled with stories of men and women used by him to fulfill his agenda. Moses in Exodus, Gideon and his 300, the widow, Elijah's widow, and now the boy uh, who offered the five loaves and the two fish. Jesus had, him, had in mind what he wanted to do and it included, it included allowing people around him to be part of that miracle. I think that there is actually a high chance that the boy who offered the five loaves and the two fish 
offered it to Jesus for his personal consumption, right? The respected teacher could be hungry because dinner time was approaching, no food around. So the boy chose to give. And the food was probably the family's dinner, but he was offering it up willingly, not expecting anything in return. He gave in a situation when the situation was still uncertain. He could not have understood that what Jesus was about to do, the miracle that was coming, or the commotion between Jesus and his disciples. But because of his simple faith, Jesus had the ingredients to perform one of the most talked about miracles in the gospel. He had a narrow interest in honouring the Lord, but Jesus widened it, widened it beyond his wildest imagination. Jesus then took it to bless the 5,000 men and their family. The boy offered what he could afford, but Jesus took it to bless the multitude. Jesus will multiply, all right? Jesus will multiply what you have to meet the needs if you are willing to offer it. In this case, the needs were great. The gaps was insurmountable. What that, was, that which, which was offered, the five loaves and the two fish, were insignificant, inconsequential. But Jesus took it and multiplied it. And in this case, the math used, the formula used, was five plus two times Jesus equals to 5,000. To be more precise, it was 5,000 plus 12 basket full, right? That's more than enough. That was more than enough, and I believe then the leftover, some of it went back to the boy and the family. Because why? We can never outgive God. That was how Jesus did his sums, and I believe, not that, not, not, not I believe, like, I understand, okay? I know that Jesus math has not changed since then. So it applies to us as well. The three points that I've raised today, right, are simple, okay? Some of you might have heard this story so many times that it is boring or predictable. But I felt the need to share it because I sense the Lord showing me that the application of this truth is necessary, is essential for our faith journey for this season. As individuals, some of you have been counting, and no matter how you counted, all right, how you adjusted, the resources seem insufficient. Whether it is time, money, energy, right, the resources are insufficient. But remember that Jesus can turn those gaps into opportunities if you trust Him. So take some time during this season, take some time here. Listen, listen to what he is saying to you, what he's requiring of you. Because sometimes, sometimes you must entrust to Jesus. You must entrust what you have into his hands for him to work the miracles that you need. From my experience, you will never be shortchanged if you choose to follow Jesus. Another reason why I felt the need to share this message is because G, uh, LSBC has entered into a period of change and uncertainty. The church has entered into a new period and the Lord is doing something new in our midst. For those of you who have not noticed, the church or change has come upon the church and I'm not just talking about the Omega Wing. Right? For the past year, the church has been forced to change. We've gone digital. Look at the, the worship team, the broadcast, the media, the staff. I think they have done a fantastic job adjusting to the change within a short time. The Lord is using the COVID situation to prepare us for the digital age. And the faster we master the use of such platforms, the mediums, the more effective we will be in reaching out to the people out there in the world. Another change, another change that has come upon us is that God is reprofiling the roles of key personnel in our leadership team, both full-time and lay leaders. God is calling new members, new leaders to join the team. 
And I believe that the, the new people, the reprofiling of the people will carry with it a new anointing for the new season, the new period. The change is significant because it will affect the way the church is running, the vision of the church, okay, where we are going. And you as members or we as members will have to adjust to the new leaders that God has called. How about the leaders who are uh, stepping down? Well, I believe that Jesus is calling them too. LSB, LSBC has been assigned a huge role. We have been assigned a huge role in God's agenda. And therefore, we need all hands on deck. That's why I use the word reprofiling. I refuse to use the word retirement. I use the word reprofiling because I believe that Jesus is calling and Jesus will reassign their role for his kingdom's purpose. Can you hear God calling? Can you hear Jesus calling? To be ready for the change, I would say this, that the elders, the pastors, the leaders, the staff, we've been working hard, planning, and doing our psalms prayerfully to prepare for the new period, for the change that has come. We are convinced that Jesus has called us. Jesus has called the church into many areas to fulfill his kingdom agenda. But as we did our psalms rationally and prayerfully, frankly, we see gaps everywhere. Right? Many things we still do not understand fully. Many things have not been translated to uh, plans. Let me share with you, let me share with you some of the gaps okay, that we see. Well, we believe that Jesus has called LSBC to Aukang, Sengkang, and Pongo, and some say the full estate in the near future. All right? I did the sums, and it counted, uh, I've counted 500,000, half a million, uh, 500,000 residents in these estates. And we are supposed to feed them spiritually. We do not have all the plans, we do not have all the resources to feed these 500,000. But we know that God has called us. We have a gap. We believe that God wants us to work through families and young children and uh, to reach this estate. We have invested much into the new infrastructure, but we do not yet know exactly what are the plans and how exactly to use all these facilities that we have. We have a gap. We believe that God has given us the DNA, the DNA to minister to the vulnerable, the poor, the needy, the VPN ministry. And there's an increased sense that we should be working with the migrant workers, reaching out to the migrant workers. Some of Asia's poorest people are right here at our doorstep. It is our mission field. We are supposed to do something about it we do not yet have the strategy to reach out to them. We have a gap. We believe that we are supposed to build people grounded in the world, okay? Looking at the training and uh, our own people, we believe that our people should be grounded in the world, better grounded, <clears throat> better grounding rather. This is especially important for the younger generation because the best way to know right and wrong in this confusing digital age is through the Word, okay? We are supposed to turn to the Bible and not to Google for the truth. But the truth is, all of us, me included, we rely on Google much more than the Bible, okay? We know, we know of young people who are excited about knowing more about the Word, about asking for materials for Bible studies, but we have yet to have all the materials, the right programs in place. We have a gap. These are just some, okay? Just a few, only, but uh, of the issues that we have discussed and that we need to address and that there are, these are gaps that we have uh, identified. And if we would just focus on gaps, and lack, it will be very discouraging. The truth is that, all right? It will appear that the church is lacking in many areas. But this is where I would encourage you to apply point two of my sermon today. 
I believe that these gaps can be opportunities because these are opportunities for Jesus to work, right? And because Jesus has called, because Jesus has called, He will supply, He will provide, He will turn these gaps into opportunities and it will be testimonies for our church, okay? He will provide the resources for the task at hand. I'm going to go through down the list again. And this time round, we put our faith on Jesus. And I would want you to see these gaps F opportunity prayerfully. Jesus has called us to provide spiritual food for 500,000 residents in three estates. What an opportunity. We have the infrastructure to reach out to young families and young children. What an an opportunity. God has called us to mission and Asia's poorest people are at our doorstep. What an opportunity. Our young people, they are hungry for the word. What an opportunity. Do you get what I mean? Do you get what I mean? Gaps are opportunity for Jesus to work. We may not know every plan, every fact, every figures, but we believe that Jesus has called LSBC. And just like John 6.6, 6, we believe that Jesus already has in mind what he intends to do and it includes allowing us, it includes allowing us to participate on the impending miracle for this new period. What an opportunity. So I'm encouraged, and I'm encouraged, okay, because I am already seeing our people offering up their five loaves and their two fish to for Jesus to work with. And it has strengthened my conviction that we are heading in the right direction. How do we feed 500,000 residents spiritually? I'm so excited to hear about Sing Tong's cell. Okay? They are already planning a reading program to reach out to families with young kids in Sengkang. And it is not only Sing Tong's cell, James Lowe's cell is planning for a lantern-making workshop during the Mid-Autumn Festival for their blocks in Sengkang near the SAC. Okay? They are doing all this, this planning, before COVID even stopped, okay? They are not waiting for the situation to change first. They are planning to be ready. And I know that Elder Kevin is uh, mobilizing their zone so that more people can participate. These are cell-level activities, and I see it as their five loaves and their two fish. And there's more. I'm hearing of cells who are offering to reach out to more blocks. Nelson Poir's YWA cell is adopting blocks 377A and B in Aukang Street 32 because why? Their member, Wen Ming and Joyce, has just shifted in. They wanted to open up their house for the cell and then the cell can be lighthouse for the residents that are in this block. They believe that because of their profile, their young working adult profile, they can better reach out to these new blocks because many of them have got young families within these blocks. And then there is a member, there are members from Bridget's, um, uh, Jason and Bridget's cell who are keen to adopt block 896 C and D in Bangkok. These are rented blocks. This is where, these are where the poor, uh, some of the poor are staying, all right? And they wanted to reach out to the poor in these areas. And then there are people like Joe and Pek Cheng who has, uh, who has uh, stepped up to pastor the block, their own block in Aukang, okay? So these are cell and individuals who are offering up their loaf and fishes for Jesus to work with. And so I think there is hope, all right? Another area is on finances, right? Finances for CLIP, our infrastructure project. I know of people who have been caught, all right? who have heard the calling of God and they have responded generously. Some of you might have heard the testimony of Ben and Lydia. They felt convicted to pledge a substantial amount and they were able to sell their gold investment at a record high price to fulfill their pledge. Now, both of them are uh, 
social workers, right? Social workers who do not have very high-paying jobs, but they pledge in obedience. They pledged in obedience and saw Jesus multiply their giving. Another young couple, right, they felt God challenging them to pledge an amount that was beyond what he has, what they have uh, in their savings for their three young boys. It was painful. If you think you hear and then you, you, you can just give and you feel no pain, then you must be joking. It, it was painful and difficult, but he obeyed. They obeyed. In the last two years, God gave both of them, husband and wife, a substantial increase in their income and bonuses despite the recession, despite the COVID situation. They saw Jesus. They saw Jesus bless their five loaves and their two fish. Yet another couple, another couple heard the call uh, for the husband to pledge the whole of his performance bonus to clip. And they saw the Lord multiply. They saw the Lord multiply the bonuses by giving him over the last two years exceptional performance, exceptional assessment, and therefore the bonus become bigger. All right? The Lord multiplied it. Frankly, it did not make sense to, for him to give because he was, or he is the only, uh, he is the sole breadwinner with four kids, okay? Four young kids, okay? But the couple gave in obedience and the Lord blessed their loaves and their fish. And guess what? There is more because the Lord is the Lord of the more, is the God of the more than enough, Right? This year, he will be receiving his promotion. Okay? We can never outgive God. Actually, there are more stories. Huh? All right? We do not uh, get to hear all of it because our people, Pai say, you know, Pai say to tell. But these are testimonies of God's glory. And if they are testimonies of God's glory, then if you have a story, you should come forward. Okay, come forward to give God that uh, glory, share that testimony so that your people, the people will be encouraged. This is LSBC's legacy. And that was how 200, a church of 200 built a building for 2,000. And that was how 200 members reached out to Aukang and now the church has grown to 1,008. Okay, because... The Lord, because the people believe that gaps can be opportunities and the Lord will use the five loaves and the two fish to meet uh, the needs and to create that miracle. Jesus has done it before and Jesus will do it again. However, if we use our eyes now to see, okay, if we just use our eyes, the roads ahead is still filled with uncertainties, gaps, okay? Things that we do not understand. But we must believe that Jesus can turn these gaps to opportunities step by step. For this period, for this season, we need step by step faith. Okay, one last one, okay? And then uh, we will end with this, all right? One last one. In our ministry to the VPN, our young people cannot visit the migrant workers anymore. They have been ministering to them at the dorms, but we can't do it anymore. And God has opened new doors. A Chinese church member uh, staying at her rented flat in Suman Wok, Pongo, saw an opportunity when she noticed a large group of Vietnamese ladies with young children okay, in these rented blocks around the area. Together with the missions department and the Chinese church, our people began reaching out to the families who were struggling with poverty, with loneliness, with abuse, some of them uh, having problems with divorce and parenting issues. There were so many needs, but we believe that the Lord had compassion for them. Through the work, through our work, okay, that started only in February this year, they are already reaching out to 17 families. And so far, 
three adults and one child had come to accept the Lord as, their, uh, as Jesus, as their Lord and Saviour. The needs are great, but guess what? Jesus are feeding them with our five loaves and our two fish. Gaps can be opportunities and the Lord will use whatever we have to create the miracle that He wants to. Right? In conclusion, there are many stories, okay, church? There are many stories, so many stories that I do not have enough time to tell them all. That is what happens when our people choose to follow Jesus when He calls. He allows us to participate in His stories and be part of the miracle that He is intending to do. We are just at the start of the new period and I believe that there is so much more, there is so much more that the Lord intends for us to be part of as individuals and as part of the church. The journey ahead is still uncertain, okay? The journey ahead is still uncertain. There are many things that we still do not know, but we believe that He has called us. We believe that as He calls us in time, things would unfold, and then maybe we can understand a little bit more. But in a time like this, when it's still uncertain, will we still choose to follow? I pray that we will continue to walk with Him step by step when He calls. And because we choose to walk step by step, we choose to obey. I believe then we can live to tell the story of how God used LSBC's five loaves and two fish to reach out to 500,000 residents in Aukang, Sengkang and Pongo. And I know that God's blessing, God's blessing will then flow back Okay, it will flow back to individuals, to you and I, because we chose to obey, because God, we can never outgive God. And right now, I'm asking for you to pray with me the words that Peter spoke before he woke on water. He cried out to the Lord, 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 if it is really you, tell me to come. Tell me to come to you. Walking on water, walking on water. Peter was, on, was in an uncertain situation. He does not have all the answers. The environment is still dark. The waves and the wind are still there. Okay? None of that has changed. But he asked, Lord, if it is you, ask me to come. Ask me to come to you. Ask me to come to you walking on water. Even though the situation is difficult, he still desires to be with Jesus. He still desires to follow Jesus. Come, let us take a minute as we close our eyes. I do not know what, what, what situation you are in, but I believe that the Lord is speaking to you through these words. Take a minute to process with the Lord. Close our eyes. Process with Him. Lord, we want to thank you that your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, that we can know that, oh Lord, if you are for us, then who can be against us? Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord, in our midst. And right now, God, I just want to speak, oh God, this truth into uh, my brothers and sisters' spirit, oh God. 
that they will know in spite of their circumstances, Lord, that you are with them, that you are for them. And that's the assurance, oh God, that they will carry with them as they journey on, oh God, in their walk with you. And for today, oh God, we want to pray especially for some of our brothers and sisters who see problems and gaps everywhere, oh God. There are so much uncertainties and it's causing, oh God, anxieties, worries, oh Father. Lord, we want to pray, oh Father, that this day that their spirit will arise Spirit that will arise to know, oh God, that, oh Lord, as you call them, oh Father, their gaps, oh God, can become opportunities, oh God, that you can work with, oh Father. Father, I just want to pray for a peace to come, oh Father, to your people, a peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God, that peace of knowing, oh God, that you are in control. I pray that you'll strengthen their faith to believe, oh God, once again, oh Father, that gaps, oh God, that you will turn those gaps in opportunity. I speak it in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Father, we pray, oh Father, that you will help them walk by faith, oh God, and let them know, oh Father, that they will not be tempted beyond what they can bear, but you are with them and you will see them true. We also want to pray for the church, oh God. In these uncertain times, when there are many things, many answers, oh God, we do not yet have, oh Father. That as a church, oh God, we will tune in during this period of time to hear what you have to say to us. We want to hear you, Lord. We want to hear your voice. We want to have you guide us, oh Father. Therefore, oh God, as we come before you, oh Father, as we come and pray and seek your face, oh God, Lord, cause us, oh God, to hear you. Cause us to hear you clearly. And as we hear you, oh Father, we pray for courage, oh God. Courage to step out in faith, oh God. Out of our comfort zone, oh Father. Trust that you will lead us, oh God, step by step, oh Father. We also want to pray, oh God, for many of us. We know that many of our brothers and sisters, we thank you for them who are already giving, oh God, of their five loaves and their two fish. Lord, we pray that you will bless it. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you will break it and you will multiply it so that you can use it for the furtherance of your kingdom, so that you can use it, oh God, to minister to those who are hungry, who are poor, who are needy. Lord, use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. We pray, oh Father, that you will bless, oh God, our people's time, our people's energy, our people's finances. Let them know that their giving is not in vain, Lord. And let them know, Father, let all of us know, let us all know, Father, that we can never outgive our Heavenly Father. Bless us, O God, abundantly. Bless us abundantly. Because, O Lord, we know, O God, we have been blessed, O Father, to be a blessing. That's our calling, O Lord. We just want to commit our church and all the individuals into your hands. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So church, what should we do next? Okay. This is where I will turn you back to some of the things we shared earlier where we are entering into a time of prayer, of fasting. Okay. There is a gap. And sometimes there is a time lag between our actions and the miracle, okay? There's a time lag. The miracle has not come yet. And in the meantime, what do we do? What do we do? What should we do? Well, the Bible directs us to seek the Lord, to seek His face and to believe that He will hear us. And as He hears us, then the Lord will answer. So for, for, for you, make time. I wouldn't say find, uh, try to attend. I would say make time. Make time to attend the Sunday prayer. Make time next week to pray for the zones to come together. And then in July, in August, if we truly believe that God answers prayer, then pray because God will hear you and God will answer. Right? That's what we ought to do at least for the next uh, two months or so. That's my encouragement to you. All right? And with that, 
church, that's the end of the service. Thank you. Thank you for uh, attending uh, the service. And we pray that uh, the Lord will lead us, the Lord will guide us, the Lord will bless us through the week. And because the Lord has blessed us, let's go out, be that light, be that blessing. Bless those that are around us. Thank you very much. And I'll see you next week. See you. Bye-bye.